complete innocent of all charges. A little more conversation with TalkingElvis.co.uk. Hello, podcasters. Welcome to episode 36 of the Talking Elvis podcast. I'm Vince Wright, and here's you go. Are you ready for this one? I am, yeah, but I'm a bit, I'm a bit concerned um, because you know I've got usual you know, news and views and stuff that we that we're generally talking about. But you just said, you basically just said turn up, didn't you? And, and yeah. um, we're going to do it. And, and, no, I've 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 had less research to do this week, so I'm a bit concerned that uh... your natural charm and wit will come into play this week. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Can you go and fetch it? <laughs> <laughs> okay, so uh, news and views. What's been happening in the Elvis world? I'll tell you what, I've got I've got something which is it's I'm I'm quite excited about this and it's not very often I get excited in the Elvis world these days. A graphic novel is coming out. Now a graphic novel to you and me is a comic. Oh, yeah, it's, it's comic an expensive book. comic in book form. Is that one of them? Yes. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. An Elvis graphic novel authorized by Elvis President Enterprises, no less. It's coming out in August of this year. And it's from Z2 Comics. So if you go to Z2 Comics.com Z the number two comics.com uh, you'll find the Elvis graphic novel on there and it's it's, it's the story of Elvis's early years in the 50s oh god leading up to his time at Sun Records and I've checked this out on the website on the Z2 comics website and it looks really good it's and it's something I think that you should have in your collection um now you can pre-order it from Z2 how much are we talking Rex. now if you just want the uh, regular soft cover one no, this is in dollars. It's nineteen ninety nine dollars. So what's that about? Fourteen, fifteen quid, I think, yeah. something like that. Uh, that's for the soft cover. Now you can go up to twenty five dollars for the hard cover, right? To get this, if you want a deluxe one, I don't know what a deluxe one comes in. Maybe it comes in a shiny box or something. That's hundred dollars. Yeah, yeah hundred dollars, right? And if you want a super deluxe, <laughs> three hundred dollars. <laughs> but. Uh, you know, if you just want, I mean, I, I'd probably have the hardcover $25 one or something oh, like that yeah. because, you know, it's a bit wearable. It's probably a bit like an annual, wouldn't it? An annual, you know. Do you remember when they did this in Lucky? Yes, indeed. Yeah. They did They did the story of Elvis, didn't they, mm, in there? Yeah, in comic similar. Book. But this will be much more Marvel, DC. Sort Absolutely, of, yes. Sort That's of um, yeah. artwork, won't it? So all yeah, that, so that will be nice. Talking about uh, comic and artwork and stuff like that, I was just I was just started the Joe Schumann A to Z of Elvis. Oh, uh, brilliant stuff! Which yes. I absolutely loved, absolutely loved. I'm not going to tell anybody what's in it. Uh, go and buy it. Simple as that, because you'll love it. That's, that's what I'm it, it's uh, it's good. I, I spoke to him in the week again, and uh -huh. um, on his uh, on his Twitter and whatnot, he, he's uh, he's had all sorts of people tech coming on and telling mm. stories and going, "Here's a funny thing." So. Mm. Uh, you know, I think that that that, that there's uh, it's getting a bit of a buzz around there. Yeah, and he's, he's obviously been here to spoke to everybody in the Elvis world, but we were first. He was, and I do love the artwork, and it. it's great. It's really good. What else is in the news? Um, <laughs> well, in, at the beginning of this month, and it's April uh, the first in the in the UK newspaper, The Sun, <laughs> which splits opinions across the across the board. Nobody uh, ever buys The Sun, do they? They always have a friend who reads who has it. Yeah, they just yeah. have to glance at it. At the, yeah, the I was looking at The Sun. Like that, don't yeah, buy it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> On the first of April, they featured a story that had um, uh, Britain's Prince Harry and Meghan Markle were secretly married three days before the official ceremony by an Elvis impersonator in the grounds of Kensington Palace. <laughs> and, and they've actually they've mocked up a photograph, but it looks very real. It looks like a photographer has taken this through the hedges type of thing. You yeah, know? So, so Megan, and, Megan and Harry are a, bit, a little bit blurred, but in but the bloke who is not blurred is, is the Elvis impersonator with his guitar. He's wearing a kind of blue and yellow sort of type of uh, glitter jumpsuits. <laughs> and, uh, I should think that um, a lot of people who actually bought that issue on april the first probably believed it yeah. um but it was april the first so um <laughs> that just made me chuckle that's all you know i, 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 love, I, 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 I do love stuff like that you know it's, it's, but it's, it's, it's that you know i mean we're not not greatest fan of the eta but current news stories still using elvis is great yeah. news isn't it, it really is. like, even <laughs> jokey news if it's yeah. still it's still in there oh good on them nice one stuff. so i, I, I did enjoy well, that one yeah, yeah. um We'll, we'll have a bit of that. Anything else going on? Oh, I've got plenty. Uh, do you want oh, to carry keep on? Oh, keep coming. Keep coming. Right, I've been watching a bit of telly, right? 
not like okay. you. And if you go and have a look at Amazon Prime Video, uh, there's a program on there called Between Black and Blue. Now, this was recommended to me by somebody who lives in New York, so it's, it's probably on Amazon in America as well. It's about a New York police captain, Michael Borelli, who retired uh, to Denver, to Denver, Colorado, to start a business with a, fel- a fellow called Hal Levine. Now, Hal Levine was later murdered after getting involved with, like, gambling and listing in, you know, some, he, got, he got involved with some dubious people in the company that him and Borelli had set up. Now, Borelli and his old partner from New York, Bob Davis, were suspected as subsequently imprisoned about this. You know, for his for Hal Levine's murder. <laughs> now, there was a guy who was nailed on to do it. All the evidence points to him, called Tony uh, Di Piero. He got away with it. I mean, he was in and out of prison for other things. He was the right idiot, <laughs> but he, but he got away with this one. And it came about during the post investigation that the guy, the officer in Denver, who was investigating this and subsequently decided to prosecute and, and imprison. Uh, Borelli and Davis was uh, uh, from the Denver Police Department. Was a, a guy called Robert Cantwell. He was he was constantly in touch with uh, uh, the Di Piero. And <laughs> you're wondering what's this got to do with Elvis? Which yeah, I'm, I'm waiting for the big link. It's coming up. It's coming up. Do you remember? So this this Robert Cantwell of the Denver Police Department. He 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 was highly involved with this with this guy who got away with it. And it was, you know, his evidence has been really sort of, you know, poo poo. I mean, both guys have been exonerated since. Um, but do you remember? There's a picture of Elvis standing with a load of policemen, right? And Elvis has got the, the policeman's cap on. He's got a full, oh, he's got the dress, whole, yes, the full dress the, uniform, yes. a whole lot. Yes. That was the Denver Police Department's. And standing next to him in that picture is this guy, Robert Cantwell, of the Denver Police Department. <laughs> Oh, wow, well, we need that picture up on the... Uh, yeah, album. and, uh, you know, it's like they interviewed, they wouldn't get... Robert Cantwell wouldn't um, come onto this documentary. He didn't want anything to do with it, funnily enough, because <laughs> he'd been found out and obviously, you know, discredited. But one or two of his colleagues from the same photograph, because there was about six of them in the photograph, they actually came forward. Oh, yeah, Elvis bought some jewellery and some cars. It was really nice, really nice bloke. And <laughs> Oh, that is lovely. What's that called? It was. It's, it's a programme called Between Black and Blue. Now, you know, the, the association with Elvis is literally five or ten minutes, you know. It's, it's, oh, yeah. Because it's, but it's... Well, it's a, like, two or three programmes in, in the in the uh, documentary. But I, I just found it fascinating. No, well, and, I, no, the and, and when the Elvis like, connection go... came up to me, I thought, yes, here he is with a discredited policeman wearing yeah. a full, full uniform <laughs> telling everybody how wonderful they are and buying them cars. <laughs> I feel like a bit of... Um, uh, Mafia and, and like, like a bit of you know gore and it's it's it's, it's quite interesting you know it's I, I quite enjoyed it and I've got one final one you final have been thing. busy I have been busy yeah I've, been, I've had a lot of time to think recently <laughs> in the UK on Sky documentaries um, we've just had the showing on the Sunday the 11th of May for the first showing of God is the bigger Elvis now this is a documentary about Dolores Hart who went on to be Oh Mother, yes, Mother Dolores. Now that is, um, if if you've got Sky documentaries on your TV package in the UK, um, you'll be able to find it on catch up. It's called God is the Bigger Elvis, and it's probably only about a forty five minute program yeah. or something like that. But it's a profile of Elvis of Dolores Hart. She obviously she obviously was choosing King Creole and loving you uh, with Elvis and uh, Mother Dolores. So that that'll be interesting. I, mean, I haven't watched it yet. I've recorded it, but. Um, Interesting stuff. Now, I, 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 um, I'm look out for that. I've seen that one. I've actually yeah. seen that one. Yes. Oh, good, cool. little doc, well good little documentary. Like that one. And uh, yeah, you can re edit it up with Change of Habit and make your own little film. It's really, really good. <laughs> <laughs> All the news I had was um, a few new releases that I had. So we've got the third volume of the sold out DVDs of the 8 mil for, uh, yeah. film footage. Which, mm-hmm. uh, good or bad, or get into the politics of who owns it, who doesn't own it, I'm not getting involved. Uh, but I think of all the VHS home movie ones I bought in the 80s, where it was a, a, a white blob on a black background, and oh, somebody terrible. tells you it was Kansas 72, you believe <laughs> them. Uh, and all you go, oh, no, 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 no. Can, you, can you believe what we stood for, what we parted <laughs> our money for? back in the 80s, you know, for all yeah. this sort of stuff. It's just ridiculous, isn't it, when you think about what we have now. 
And I, I'd buy, I, I remember buying a Dutch um, TV show because there was like four seconds extra footage in it or something. <laughs> <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I know somebody sidles up to you in the disco and say, I want to buy this tape. What is yeah. it? Dallas 1973. Oh, great. I ain't got that one. Uh, but the, the other side of this now is another thing that I got hold of was the seven inch single of the Sinatra show. So the mm. nice to go traveling and the um, yeah. uh, fame and fortune. Um, mm-hmm. Nice one there from uh, from Henrik over there in uh, in, in Graceland 2 land in uh, Memphis Mansion land. <laughs> Uh, and Tony, who does all the tweaking with the sound. So, yeah, I think that's a load better. That'll be pirated to death everywhere before long. It's, it's, it's nice that we get a, a, a clearer recording of that, isn't it? It's, it's always, nice that always there's always still hope, there. isn't there? There's yeah, still absolutely. hope of things yeah. being found. This is Henrik Knudsen from the Memphis Mansion in Randers, Denmark, and you are listening to the Talking Elvis podcast. Yeah. And I got me Follow That Dream, his hand in mine set. With it, with my three discs. So luckily, I I never got round to buy in the last follow that dream version of that. So yeah, I've had my money's worth because I didn't have it. Uh, so very happy happy bunny with that. But Excellent. how many times am I going to walk them golden slayers? I I don't know. But there you go. <laughs> right. So right on then with, on with the show. Now, now the bit where I don't know what's coming up. Right. Well, I wanted to do this live for you because i wanted your opinions rather than research so okay. Okay. i like in the elvis world you know i would like to buy all sorts of things now a, a, another soundboard recording of you know whatever i'm not interested in unless yeah. he suddenly sings blue moon of kentucky in a reggae style or <laughs> curses everybody I've, and I've got shoots the audience. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm not, I, I, so I end up. You end up as a collector. You end up sort of going down strange little rabbit holes. Anyway, yeah. I found this album for sale, and I, I looked at it, and I like contemporary. I like things that were through Elvis's life. So when he died. Everybody in the mother did it, and the Elvis died, and he bought a truck, and 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 all and all of those things, and they all did that. Yeah. And this is an album that came out in '67, so it's it's right in the middle of Elvis' world, but it's yeah. actually in the middle of Beatlemania, so it's a bit oh. Elvis has gone off the boil a bit. But this album I found is called Sven Headland sings Elvis. Now, does that mean <laughs> anything to you at all? Uh no. Right. No, but I I I, I like that he's called Sven already. Yeah. <laughs> right. So I look at this and I'm thinking 1967. Right. I, I'm looking at the track listing, which you know mostly greatest hits sort of things. Um, oh, but, just, he's doing Elvis covers, yeah. Yeah, but he's not doing it in the style of. It is just <clears throat> this guy singing it. And mm. the last track on the album is "I'm Coming Home." Now that made me think straight away. This guy is a fan. This this guy knows his onions. That's not yeah. that's not a forty greatest. No. And I type in Sven Headland into Google, and you find straight away. And this is the bit where your ears are going to prick up. <laughs> you find that he was a member of the band the Hep Stars. Really? Any idea? And the Hep Stars are now, a Swedish now, hang on, band. Hang on, hang on, hang on. Was Bjorn Jolvaeus? The other one. Benny Anderson? Yeah. <laughs> really? He was in that? He was, yeah, right. In the same group. Right. So this guy was the lead singer of the the Hep Stars, oh, wow. which, which Benny was a um, keyboard player. Oh, wow. Yeah. And I've got this album, so I, I, I've bought this at this point because I'm an anorak. So I, I've got this, and I suddenly don't tell thought, me. "Don't tell me you have you you have." Go on, go on. No, go. no, 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 no. If only, right? <laughs> <laughs> the blonde one is not going to be on the podcast in a minute. No, um, I, would, I would prefer Annie Freed. <laughs> well, uh, <laughs> so any road. Anyway, go I on. suddenly say digress. An Abba connection. Because yeah. they because Elvis was alive and the Abba were were, mm. were big were mm. big, and I thought, but well, I'd never hear stories of this. So, what do I do? I need to talk to somebody about this. I can't okay. get hold of, uh, of the guy who, himself. I couldn't manage to do that because I'm you know bone idle. Yeah. 
<laughs> so I I got on to the ABBA fan club and said, who do I need to talk to about this? Oh, no, and God. they've put me on to Mr. ABBA, right? This is an ABBA historian who's right. written a million books. You know, every good, <laughs> good book that you've read about ABBA is this guy. So this guy knows his onions. Oh, man. So what, I've got him to do an interview. But I'm thinking it's just for a, a fairly tentative um, Elvis connection. Uh-huh. I find out other things. Uh, his, dad, his dad met Elvis. Oh, his my dad, goodness. He, he, you know, and there is a whole story about that. There are other things. So this wow. interview now wow. uh, is, uh, <laughs> is with a, a, um, <clears throat> an ABBA historian. Mm. And it's it's amazing. I just oh think my. the story the story there. So Benny's not on this album. This is just a solo album. But right, there are okay. a lot of other ABBA connections to it, and and then there's other other Elvisy stories in it as well. Oh. I, I found this really interesting because I love my my music history. We love ABBA anyway, don't we? Oh yeah, absolutely. yeah. Of course we do. Yeah, it's not it's not it's not correct to say so, but yes, we do. Yeah, um, but it's good. these good. days. I mean, I will say the Mamma Mia films are a waste of celluloid. But never, apart from never that, never been interested. In yeah, not interested <laughs> in that at all. Pierce Brosnan, great. Pierce Brosnan singing. There's no point, right? <laughs> <laughs> don't don't go there. So right. so so no, I ha- we haven't got Aberon, which is a uh, shame. But uh, we've got lots of good stories. Oh, this is um, good. I'm looking forward this, to this. All, this really. is um, an Abba connection. So. Are you ready for this? Oh, I'm ready. Come on, let's have it. Here is my guest, ABBA historian, Carl Magnus Palm. Welcome to the show. Thank you very much. Um, and yes, I've, I've got this because Sven Hedlund was a member of the he- the Hep Stars then, but that also had band member Benny from ABBA. Is that right? That's correct, yes. That's right. So that's about the extent of my knowledge on it. Now, I've opened a can of worms finding you because you've also got some other Elvis connections. Can I start off with my usual five questions and uh, we get to sort the men from the boys. We get to know who's who and what's what. Okay. Uh, so right, throwing you right in the deep end here. Have you ever been to Graceland? I haven't. Now, is it a thing that you, you're interested in, or do you do you think it's just Mickey Mouse Disneyland? It's not really oh, on, oh, on no. your radar. No, no, no. It's it's on my bucket list. I definitely <laughs> want to go. I, absolutely. I mean, I'm not just I'm not just saying that because I'm on this show. I, I really, really want to go to Graceland. It's just it hasn't happened yet. No, no, that's, that's fine. Mm. Question number two. Um, this is going to test your age. I'm sorry about this one. How did you hear of the news that Elvis had died? Um, I, oh, I think I it was in the papers or if it was on TV. I don't remember. I do, but I do remember that day very clearly when I was like, oh wow, Elvis has died. You know, I was I was 12 years old at the time. <laughs> no, so. Um, yeah, I just I just remember I just remember it happening and it was a bit of a shock. And actually that's when my my interest in Elvis began for real. That's when I sort of oh, you know, I started hearing the the fifties, the old late fifties songs yeah. that I hadn't really heard before. Um and uh, yeah, it grew from there. So were you big in into ABBA at this point? Um, I wasn't so much of an ABBA fan, strangely enough, uh, at the time. Um, uh, I mean, obviously, I lived in Sweden, grew up in Sweden, yeah. so I couldn't escape them even if I wanted to. <laughs> but 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 <laughs> but, uh, but I was more I was more a Beatles fan, and so I was listening to to uh, I mean, Wings were <laughs> that was my big group in the seventies. I want a super group, yeah, yeah, yeah. This the next question I ask. Uh, alienates lots of people like this one do you watch elvis tribute artists or impersonators i well i don't recall ever doing that so i guess the answer <laughs> is no 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 that's a good choice i just think they're a waste of 
oxygen, but that's another yeah. story. Yeah. Uh, I'm not a big fan, but it, uh, some people seem to like it. Mm. Um, if you had to choose one Elvis song now, only one, what would be your favourite? Off the top of your head, for no apparent reason, what would you go for? Um, just off the top of my head, I would say The Wonder of You. Oh, classic. Classic, yes. And done to death in, in a million uh, karaoke's. Uh, that's mm. good. Mm. Um, favourite film? Favorite Elvis film? Um, Do you like the cheesy sixties ones, or uh, you're going to go for the rockers? Um, I think I would. I haven't seen them all, but I I have seen quite a few. I think I've seen half of them, uh, at least. So uh, probably King Creole. Oh, th yeah, that's got to be the, that. The, the, when I asked this question, that is the most answered one he, it's oh, a top really? quality film i mean apart from it being an elvis film the cast is excellent the director's excellent it's beautifully filmed uh, it really is a, a notch above the others yeah um, and then uh, the final question another one just to upset people uh, do you ever dress up as elvis i don't <laughs> no. <laughs> no it's not a thing that i've ever really felt the need to do but uh uh, apparently it's out there and people do. Mm. Um, that's great. So so we got a little bit about you there. So when I got this record and I, I, I sort of wanted to, who's going to be the expert? Who do I talk to? I sort of emailed about and they recommended you. So I was put on to you and I have in front of me then this this album. So this album that, that I, I, I bought came out in 67 and... It's Sven Hedlund. So, he was he the lead in the uh, in the uh, the Hep Stars? Is he the brains behind it, or is he just one of the band, or what? How well, did they come about? Yeah, I'm not sure about brains, but he was. <laughs> I mean, <laughs> nothing wrong with his brains, but but <laughs> he wasn't the one who formed the band. The band already existed when he joined the band in six. I think he joined in '63. Or something like that, and um, uh, but he became the lead singer pretty quickly, and he was the big, the big, 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 big idol in this in the Hep Stars, and you know the Hep Stars was Sweden's biggest band in the 1960s. It, they were our Beatles, you know. You well, I was going to say, did, you know, be, you said you were a Beatles fan. There, mm. uh, did they? You know, were they perceived bigger than the Beatles because they were homegrown or were they sort of number two to the Beatles? Yeah, uh, good question. In a, in a sense, I guess they were bigger in the Beatles because, like you said, they were homegrown. They toured every summer. We have we have this um, uh, we have this thing called folk parks in uh, uh, which are like outdoor venues. And there, there's like a. Uh, you know, a fairground, and you go there, and they had they had concerts um, also in the in the summers. So, the the most popular artists in Sweden they would go on folk park tours for the duration of the summer, and they only play thirty minutes thirty minute concerts. So they could they could do like two shows or perhaps sometimes three shows per day at different venues. You know, you really, did your. Yeah. Yeah, you did your 30 minutes in an afternoon and then a few hours later you were somewhere else did 30 minutes and then late at night you did 30 minutes and they had you know some some summers i think they had like 250 300 shows <laughs> uh which is a lot um that yeah that is that is crazy so so in that sense i think they were more popular in the, than the beatles yeah. and they you know they had several number one hits and and Sven, he was like the biggest teen idol in Sweden in the 1960s. He he, he went beyond and you know uh, ev everything else uh, that was around. So oh, yeah, that's good. So so he, he's is um, Benny from from Abba. Is he in it from day one? He he. Uh, they released one single that he wasn't on, uh, but then their keyboard player uh, who played the electric organ he yeah. left. And then Sven actually had seen Benny in play with whatever band he was in at the time. So, oh, that guy is pretty good. So he brought him into the band. So he was, th that first single they released, the Hep Stars, wasn't a success. So 
Benny was he was with the band from the moment they became successful yeah. in 1965. So that's the middle of of, of Beatlemania, and and I suppose really Elvis is you know some rubbish films in the background. I mean Elvis is down the ranking at this point, but they they seem to cover a lot of of Elvis tracks, didn't they? They did. I mean, they they started out. The thing is, they started out as a bit of a. I go. What what would be would, would be the English word for it? Like a greaser band, or you know, yeah. like like uh, they their audience when they started out was mainly these these guys who were still living in the in the late fifties. You know, who yeah. drove around in big American cars or you know motorbikes and. <laughs> That kind of thing, and fantastic. Uh, so, so they they had a they were very much a rock band when they started out, and then when Benny joined, he started writing songs, and they became more typical, you know, mid sixties pop, more Beatles influenced. But when they started out, it was more, yeah, you know, this kind of rock and roll. Yeah, you you look at the. I was looking on on Spotify, and I, I mean, I listened to a, a live album on there. Mm. And and you know the screaming is is Beatlemania screaming, isn't it? It it really is that you know you can hear it from that. And they're covering Ray Charles, they're covering Little Richard and Jerry Lewis, Jerry Lee Lewis and things. Uh, and it, it's a proper, it's like just as you've described it. It it's the classics. It's a good covers band doing it. So mm. Benny comes along and and makes it. Is this going to be more psychedelic, folky sort of? Uh, I don't know. I don't know. Not so much psychedelia, I think. But it, but he um, uh, he did one of those. He did he did pop pop songs in the style of the Beatles and maybe a bit of the Beach Boys and yeah. and if you think about Rolling Stones, more like you know Ruby Tuesday style <laughs> Rolling yeah. Stones rather than uh, Satisfaction, maybe uh, <laughs> that kind of thing. So. Uh, but but they were still you know they were all big Elvis fans I think and it's it's like you said it's interesting that they did so many um, so many Elvis tracks um, and and released them uh, used them as B sides on their singles. Well, and I think, yes, that was yeah. the thing, and that, and what struck me is they they they're obviously fans because they're quite obscure. You know, it's not just the greatest hits that they're covering uh, to have a. Uh, Young and Beautiful as a B-side of, of So Mystifying. Mm. You know, that's not one that your average greatest hits would, would have on it of an no. Elvis album. So you must be in the now. The the, the Sven Hedlund one, uh, you know, Seeing I'm Coming Home uh, as the last track on it, it, it's, it tips it again there. It says, this guy knows what he's on about. He knows he knows he's Elvis, uh, which was good. So, so sales-wise... They're, they're huge, they're number one. Are they on the TV every five minutes on every pop show that's going? Yeah, uh, we, we didn't have too many pop shows <laughs> at the time, but if there was a pop show, they were on it. So, yeah, they were on TV. They were on TV quite a lot, but definitely, absolutely, yeah. So where, how does this Elvis album, uh, Sven Sings, uh Sings Elvis. This is not the Hepstar. Has he left at this point, or is this just a solo project? It's just a solo project for him. He's still very much a member of the Hepstars, and I I think it was just you know he was a huge Elvis fan. It's interesting because I was at the, at the library yesterday and I just stumbled across an an article from when uh, Elvis died. And they'd asked these Swedish artists for comments, and and Sven was one of the one who um, who commented on it, and he and he said, you know, it's it's like um, Elvis was for him, it was everything for him, you know, when he that that he was the one, Elvis was the one that made him want to become a singer, you know. Oh wow, wow. if I could be a star like that, he was yeah. the the inspiration. So I think I think it starts and ends with Elvis pretty much for for Sven. This is the rock family tree, isn't it? You know that with it, without Elvis there wouldn't have been a Beatles. Without a Beatles there wouldn't have been a whoever. And you know you mm. go right right the way through, and yeah. it, and it all comes back to you know fifties rock and roll, fifties rock and roll and punk are the same thing. Aren't they? It's, it's yeah, it, you know it's rebellion, it's three chords and and a 
shout. Um, it's brilliant. I, I just love the history of music for this. Mm. So, so the, this album's come about now. If it is the middle of Beatlemania and it is um, 67 and we've got the Summer of Love and we've got all of that going, Elvis's films have waned a little bit. You'd have thought that it would have been Sven sings the Beatles or the Beach Boys or something. <laughs> um, so, so was this? Were the sales of this album very big? Do you know, I I honestly don't know because we had a very strange. I'm not going to bore you with a long story, <laughs> but we had a very strange uh, sales chart at the time, which was we didn't have like a separate singles chart and a separate albums chart. We had a sing a, a chart that mixed singles and albums and EPs. So if any given week a single was selling more, you know, was at number one and it sold a thousand copies, say, and if, it, if, if there was an album that sold 990 copies that week, then that would, would have been number two. So it was all, <laughs> yeah, and, and, and the, yeah, and in the 1960s, album sales weren't that huge. So most of the, the, the entries on, on that chart were, were singles and EPs. Yeah. So we w it was very rare for an album to chart. So I I I honestly don't know. I guess it it must have done kind of well because he was such a huge star. Uh, Sven was, you know. So is, I'm, is it sort I'm, of he could have done no wrong? He could have read the phone book and that that would have sold. Yeah, as well. <laughs> I, yeah, I think so. I think so at that time because they they had so many hits. They had hits in English and they had hits in Swedish and you know. Um, so I, I think, and I think, like you said, Elvis was not, it was not his best period. Uh, but but I think there was still a lot of love in Sweden for Elvis. You know, Elvis was always big in this country. And um, um, so probably that combination of, you know, Sven, the big idol, and Elvis, that people, people knew these songs, these songs, and I don't know. Yeah. It is, I, but I agree with you. It is kind of weird. <laughs> yeah, yeah there, I mean, there was another factor that they, they had a, a, a manager, the Hepstars, who was also, he also owned their record company, uh, which was called Olga Records. Oh, that's it. That's what this is on, yes. Yeah. Um, so that's their own record company as well? Yeah, well, it's, the... it's, it's not the Hepstars, but it's their managers. He was called Åke Järad. And um, he, he... Uh, he in 1956, I think I got this right. In 1956, he was contacted by Hill and Range, Elvis oh, you know, yeah. publishers. Yeah, and because he was in, he was a songwriter and he was into publishing and stuff. And they needed someone to take care of uh, Scandinavian rights for uh, for the Hill and Range publishing for you. Well, for you know Elvis Presley music and Gladys music and yeah. all that. Um. And he said, oh, yes, I'll do that. And that turned out to be a gold mine for him because, <laughs> yeah, because he had, you know, he collected royalties for, you know, performance royalties, but also he sold, you know, sheet music and these song books with the lyrics, yeah. which apparently sold like crazy. And apparently from from it was from that money that he was able to start his record company and then sign the hip stars, you know. So it's it's Elvis. Everything goes back to Elvis. <laughs> it really does. Well, yeah. This is even, this story just gets better. Uh, yeah. so, so 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 it was in their their interest to do an Elvis album because they're going to get money every which way. Exactly. They, you know, he would he would probably have liked that idea. Or Kiarad would, you know, that okay, you know, it's publishing income. It's great if he does an Elvis album. <laughs> you know. Did he go on to work with other people that have any great name? Uh, no. not really. Yeah. No, no. Yeah. Oh, that's good. All oh, right, that's that's fantastic. Because you know, looking at the back cover of this album again, you've got Sven lying on the floor with his record collection and all these Elvis albums there. Uh, it's just a great shot. It's just a great '60s shot with that that hair. And it, it's um, looking at it now. What's the guy out the stones? The one who died? Um, Brian Jones. Right, it's Brian Jones, isn't yeah. he? I'm just yeah. looking at that picture. It's Brian Jones. Uh, mm. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you're right. Yeah. yeah, it really is. I just thought, oh yeah, fantastic. Um, so they they've got they've got publishing interest in this. They've got a, a huge homegrown 
star. Um, so, so nobody else, no other Hep stars are on this album then. So Benny might have been on some of the B sides, Elvis tracks that we've we've talked about before. Yes, but, he, but in the the Hep stars aren't on this. It's all orchestral, is it then? Yes, it is. It's it's this um, this arranger who did a lot of these easy listening and uh, you know that type of thing. He was a, a, an arranger who was around at the time. Um, so he took care of that. And is, is this um, Sven Olaf? Is it? Yes, Sven Olaf Valdorf. Yes, Valdorf. That's it. Sven Olaf Valdorf. Because I'm, I'm trying to read the back cover of the album, and I can only pick things out. Um, <laughs> obviously, uh, but I, I guess that that's what that was. Now, is is he the guy who was the conductor for ABBA at the Eurovision? Yes, that's right. The guy dressed up as Napoleon. Napoleon yeah. in Brighton yes. at the Eurovision. Because that was a, that was a thing that that I did kind of see when I was looking at this. So great ABBA connection there. Uh, mm. After so was he was he a producer or what for ABBA or was it just for that that song? No, he was. He did. Uh, he wasn't a producer, but he was. Uh, if they needed a string arrangement. He did that for, let's say, the first two or three years of the ABBA career. He was so, yeah, so he did the string arrangements for, well, Dancing Queen, for instance, he did the string, string arrangements for that. And, uh, yeah. I must confess, I, 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 I did, um, I, I was a, a DJ for, for the parties and weddings and everything. And I must have played Dancing Queen a million times in my life. It was just the go to song, wasn't it? <laughs> yeah, it's one of those floor fillers, isn't it? It's, it really yeah, is. In case of emergency, put yeah. Dancing Queen on and exactly. you can't go wrong. Um, so so this guy is already sort of the James Last, is he, of, of Sweden? Is he the... Yeah, he... he's... Uh, he, I mean, he did... I think he did a few instrumental albums, certainly not as many as James Last, but uh, <laughs> no one did as many as James you know, Last. No. <laughs> on every Wednesday. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> Uh, no, he did a few of those, but he was also uh, one of those go-to arrangers when you, when, you know, these vocalists were, you know, uh, we're, we're going to do a, a Swedish cover of this, uh, this easy listening hit. Then you get him to do the arrangement and to conduct the orchestra, things yeah. like that. So there were a few, a select few people who were used a lot uh, and he was one of them. Oh, that's fantastic! So, so they they put this album out. Um, it did, however, however, it did. Was there was there any other albums after that that he he did with uh, with that Elvis connection? He did one. He did another. Uh, uh, is it called "Sings Elvis in Memphis" or something like that? In two thousand and ten. So quite a bit later, he did another Elvis album, and he went to Sun Studios to record. Not not the entire album, I think, but a few songs. Right, so excellent. so that's that's dedication for you, I think. Yeah, that that shows that it, it's long lasting. I mean, this is a bizarre question. Is is he still with us? He is. Yes. Yes. Oh, right, just, I, yeah. I couldn't find any contact details, so uh, I mm. didn't know where, whether I could get anything. So it'll be uh, we'll, we'll have to uh, forward this uh, this show to him after. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> sort of. Uh, give him a link uh no so that's good so is he still working now yes he is actually i uh, i mean nobody's working at the moment but of course yeah. but, but 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 yeah no he's he still does live shows he does um he had a after the hep stars because the hep stars split in 1969 and then um he had a very successful uh solo career no not a solo career obviously a, a duo career with his wife who's a, a, an American singer called Charlotte Walker, and they, they had a, a, a duo that was very popular here in Sweden in the 70s. And then he's kept on performing as, you know, the Hep Stars have had reunion without Benny, but with the other members. And uh, so they're, they're still performing as the Hep Stars, or he's performing as Sven Hedlund, or he's, you know, he's performing with his, with his well, now ex-wife. But they, I think they still do some performances together from time to time. So was it was it a split just because it was the right time, or was it a was it a was there a Yoko? Yes. It was not a Yoko <laughs> thing. No, no. But it, it, a lot of people thought that actually, but it but it wasn't. No, it was more like, um, 
towards the end of the career of the Hepstar's career, they they sort of they drifted into things that you in quotes shouldn't do, <laughs> as if you want to be takes taken seriously as a pop band. You know, if you were a pop band in Sweden in the nineteen sixties, you should sing in English. And if you sang in Swedish, you were veering into easy listening and cabaret and stuff like that. But they recorded something in Swedish that became a huge hit. And and it turned out that, you know, they had a lot of success uh, within that area. And then they actually started doing cabaret. And Sven and, and Benny, Benny Anderson, who later joined ABBA, they were sort of in favor of this. They wanted to continue doing this more like uh, Swedish and cabaret stuff they, because it was successful. Whereas the other guys in the band, they felt, hmm, you know, we started out as a rock band. Uh, what, what happened to all that? We want to be, you know, we want to do that instead. So, so it was, uh, you know, it was, as they say, musical differences, uh, yes. uh, that classic. <laughs> did they, would they, they go under a new name then, did they? Um, no, the, well, the Hep Stars, the, the guys, the, the guys who wanted to do more rock and roll, they continued as the Hep Stars for a few years, whereas whereas Benny, by that time, Benny had met Bjorn and he wanted to, he didn't really think he was going to go on being a performer. He wanted to be a songwriter together with Bjorn and, and record producer and stuff like that. So he hadn't really planned on being in ABBA. And, was and, Bjorn? Was Bjorn? Um, yeah, was Bjorn? Uh, he was never a member of the the, the Hep Stars, was he? No, he wasn't. He he played he uh, he played a few live gigs with them because the guitarist was abroad or something, and so he, he did a few. You know, Hon- honorary so, member. Yeah. yeah, exactly. But <laughs> but he was never a, he was never a member because he was his his own folk music and easy listening uh, kind of light pop band that he was in. Um, but that was also um, sort of not, they were not as hot anymore by the end of the 60s. Yeah. So so Bjorn was looking to the future and Benny was looking to the future. And that's how they hooked up and and um, began writing songs together. And did they write any together for the Hep Stars? Did that ever happen? Oh, yes. Oh, yes, absolutely. Um, Bjorn and Benny met in 1966 and uh, they... Bjorn had just started writing songs by himself and Benny had just started writing songs by themselves and uh, by himself and they would you know, they were sort of discussing wow you know oh so you're into writing songs that's great maybe we should try and write something together at some you know at some point so they did and they did that in the summer of 1966 uh, and it's a song called Is- isn't it easy to say and that was recorded by the Hepstars so the very first song that Bjorn and Benny wrote together was recorded by the Hep Stars. And was that with Sven Hedlund singing? Yes. Oh, amazing. Oh, that's mm-hmm. really good. Oh, that comes together nicely. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's, it's kind of interesting. <laughs> A little more conversation with TalkingElvis.co.uk. This album then, uh, you know, so I, 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 I picked this up um, because it, it, it was an, an oddity. Uh, and it could have been a complete unknown for me, you know, for, for when I picked it up. And it's the interest with the ABBA connection and everything else after um, that, that really sparked my in- interest. Um, so so leading into ABBA uh, quite nicely here, I started to think, well, are there any are there any other Elvis connections to ABBA? Because obviously they were contemporaries for for, for, for sort of a few years uh, of, of their meeting the big time. I mean, were, were ABBA doing the States pre-77? I always think of, of, of them doing Europe and Britain, particularly in Australia with Elvis, uh, with the move, the movie. Were they, were, was ABBA a big thing in America? At, you know, sort of before. Yeah. Yeah. Um, before 1977. Well, they never t- they didn't tour there before 1977 they uh, they went there to do tv and stuff like that yeah so i don't think they um, uh, well you know i they don't wouldn't think they really have been on elvis's radar then no probably yeah, they, not i mean no. he may he, you know he i i don't know if maybe he heard them on the radio uh, yeah. because they had 
obviously they had i mean dancing queen was number one in uh april 1977 so if he i don't know to what extent he was listening to top yeah, 40 that, radio that, that, that's time, but but oh, uh, that'd be an amazing cover to find on a reel in a in a cover. Yeah, story. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> when I when when I was looking around, and tell me if I'm wrong here, but they did a TV show with the Olivia Newton John and sang an Elvis song. Is that right? Yeah, I think they did in that um, that medley, didn't they? Is it in a medley? Uh, is it? But they were. I, they, it was like the '68 special. They're in the in the round, sort of, uh, with Olivia Newton John doing Jailhouse Rock. Yes, uh, that's right. That's I, right. I've seen a tiny clip of it and wasn't yes. sure what that was all about. But I haven't seen the whole show. So is is the whole uh, Olivia Newton John show uh, with them still around? Is it? Is yes, that, it uh, is. It's around. Yes. Um, and I've got uh, here. It's Steve Binder was the producer of that. Who was the producer of the Elvis '68 special? Exactly. That was the, that, that was the only other uh, Elvis link I could get to Abba. So that mm. must have been, uh, you know, that, that must have been some great backstage conversations. You know, it must have cropped up, wasn't it? And uh, obviously, the Olivia Newton Don's "Let Me Be There." Mm. Um, I, I, I've seen that little clip as well, where where Abba was singing that with her, and Elvis did a cracking cover of that. He did in his live shows. That's so right. So that'd be a that'd be a nice mega mix one mm. of the days when yeah, you know, <laughs> yeah. And every, everybody has to do a remix of everything these days. Exactly. Um, is, can you think of any any other Elvis connections to to Abba itself? Uh, not, I mean, not was... beyond the fact that they they were all ABBA fans. I, I mean, I'm I'm not sure I've heard Agneta, the blonde singer in ABBA. I, I I'm not sure I've heard her mention Elvis specifically as an inspiration. But I'm sure she liked, you know, yeah. the, the early '60s stuff. I I guess would have been uh, on her radar. But I know, for instance, the the first the first pop or well, the first rock record that um that benny bought was jailhouse rock the single Fantastic. or the ep or whatever it was yeah. and and uh, i know frida has said somewhere that um that she was uh she when she saw the movie of jailhouse rock that was like oh god wow oh my that this is great you know it's yeah. like i want to be like him you know i want to be I want to have a career like that. I want to be, you know, be an artist. Uh, so that was, it was kind of an epiphany for her. And I know that Bjorn was also an Elvis fan, you know. So, but apart from that, the, those are the only Elvis connections I can think yeah. of. <laughs> no, that's great. Yeah. And I, I always think when, when you see Frida on the, on the stage, she's just so up for dancing and singing. She mm. absolutely loves, she, she, you know, she owns the stage. Uh, like that, doesn't she? So she, mm. she, she's got the rock star gene in there, hasn't she? Oh, absolutely. I mean, she was the one in ABBA who really enjoyed being on stage. And, it really uh, looked like it, you oh, know, yeah, it, yeah, yeah. every time. Yeah. Um, oh. I think, actually, now come to think of it, um, they're, you know, ABBA obviously are famous for their stage costumes and uh, the, the clothes they wore, they're kind of legendary. Uh, yeah. and And the guy who designed most of them he was called Uwe Sandström and um he has he has talked about some of some of Abbas costumes um for some of them he was inspired by you know Elvis's you know these jumpsuits that he was yeah. wearing and, and the high collar and everything like that so yes so, because there's yeah. a lot of uh the 70s has got a lot to answer for us yeah <laughs> yeah <laughs> But I like that. I mean, I like yeah. Elvis. Elvis is those jumpsuits. I oh, think it's, yeah. they're good. They look great on him. And, uh, of its time, it's amazing. Yes, it? yeah. I mean, that's the joy of going to the museums and, and whatever they've got. They've got the Elvis stuff. And, uh, uh, you know, you, you're up there and you're, you're standing right next to these suits. And you go, he's a big bloke, wasn't he? He was a tall guy. Talk about the good times with Talking Elvis. But you have some other connections to Elvis outside of, of your... Uh, your Abba historian uh, hat, yeah. don't you? Yes. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It's 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 kind of uh, interesting that my dad actually met Elvis, and I don't think many Swedes <laughs> did meet Elvis because obviously oh. he didn't come here. You know, 
So uh, where was what was your dad doing in, in the, at that point then to meet him? Well, he was he was a photographer, and uh, in the nineteen sixties in particular, he worked with with a journalist called Bo Hansen, and they had a lot of uh, assignments for a weekly magazine here, here called Alles, A-L-L-E-R-S. And um, so they went on these, uh, this is back in the 60s, and these magazines, they had a lot of money, you know, you could, you could go for, uh, you know, amazing trips. So they had, they were out for a, f- a few months uh, in a row, and they traveled all over the world, and they did all these kind of reports on, you know, uh, how are people living in Taiwan and, uh, you know, uh, ordinary day in Hong Kong and, <laughs> you know, things like that, you know, th- th- that people liked at the time because you didn't, you know, the world was smaller then. Um, so, uh, but they also went to, uh, I know they went to Las Vegas and they went to Hollywood and they did, you know, interviews with stars and uh, whatever. And, in 1963, they went to. Um, they were in Hollywood, and I. My dad told me this story. Uh, they, before they went on this particular trip uh, in 1963, they wanted to meet, you know, some some movie stars or singers or whatever. That could be interesting for Swedish uh, readers and to sort of <laughs> to sort of have a reason to meet them they invented because uh, they invented they faked this thing about oh you won a contest you know we had a we asked people to vote on their favorite singer and you won so we have a gift to you like a glass ashtray from from a famous uh, glass uh, what do you call it glassware uh, oh, yeah. in, in in Sweden this beautiful ashtray and we want to give it to you that's our prize and we want to give it to you so we want to meet you I mean there hadn't been a contest uh, that's <laughs> according to my dad there never was a contest but they used this to blag their way in into these meetings um, and you can imagine me trying to meet Elvis at that time you know that wasn't that was I mean the colonel you know, would have you jump through hoops yeah, the, yeah. That's the times. Right? Yeah, so so they exactly. So that was very difficult, but apparently they met him. My dad only remembered that it was on a film set, but he didn't remember which film, but apparently it was it was on the set of Viva Las Vegas. Oh, um right. um I learned afterwards. Uh, uh and um so they went there and um and they gave him this ashtray, and uh, and I think they did an interview. I don't have the actual article, unfortunately, but uh, oh. I think there was an interview. My dad wasn't allowed to take photos, though. You know, no. because, like take I said, a, everything. He took a photographer, and you weren't allowed to take photos. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> so that was frustrating, of course. But uh, but uh, so there was a photo taken of of Elvis with that uh, glass ashtray, and there was also a photo of. Elvis of of the, this journalist that my dad was working with uh, handing over the the glass uh, ashtray to to Elvis, right. but that was taken by a studio photographer, I guess, at the, on the MGM lot or whatever. The, yes, someone who was knows. sort of yeah, so that it was going to be exactly like they. So want. if they wouldn't let you take pictures, there certainly wasn't a recording of the event then. No, no. Oh, oh what a shame! I yeah, thought no. you were going to bring out a sixteen mil reel and just go. Oh yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> By the way, would, <laughs> yeah, wouldn't that have been great? That, that would have been amazing. No, but oh. you're, my dad met met all sorts of people at the time, and then uh, and it's uh, yeah, it kind it's kind I think it's kind of cool that he met Elvis. <laughs> he met Elvis in the early sixties. Oh, I love that. Yeah, yeah. I, I, and did did he say anything about him? Was he a nice guy or yeah? Was it just I, thank you very much for all and get out? Uh, I, I I think I think his his version of the story, my dad's version of the story, was that the the uh, Bo the the journalist he didn't quite like Elvis so much uh, he thought he was uh, I don't know uh, what word I should use you know a bit uh, slimy or something like that it sounds <laughs> awful but but um, I don't know uh, but but my dad but I thought he was really nice you know <laughs> so uh, that's that's all you know you know shook his hands and 
I, I can't imagine it would have been a very long meeting. No. But, uh, no. but it was something. And that's, you know, that's a, that's a lovely rarity that, that you know, a, a new story that I, you know, when I haven't heard these stories, something else that, that happened. It would lovely yeah. to, you know, sort of pinpoint, oh, yeah, it was, it was this day or that day, you know. And, mm. uh, you know, what, what, what was he filming? What would he have been wearing at the time? What, what scene were they, were they doing? Oh, it's, it's mind boggles. You see, yeah. it's crazy, though, because these days, it'd be the opposite, wouldn't it? They'd be welcoming you in, you'd video it, you'd have a comment. It'd be on YouTube within 10 minutes and Facebook. Yeah. Oh, it's, it's such a shame. But yeah, yeah. It's a story they can't take away from you. No, uh, no, it's, it's <laughs> this thing with, you know, six degrees of separation, you know, yes. so I'm, I'm, I'm only, it's only my dad. Yeah, that is close. <laughs> and now I've got that through you. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah. I'm, I'm one <laughs> yeah. my, new, my new best mate. Uh, yeah. That's great. <laughs> uh, and then uh, you were involved with uh, an Elvis book as well, weren't you, in Sweden? Yes, I was. I was. Um, there's this guy called Bruno Tillander who... Um, uh, who does these uh, i mean he's a huge elvis fan and he went to i think he went to to the united states in 90 well before elvis died i think it was yeah he was there in the 70s and since then he's w one of those kind of you know make things happen kind of guy and um so for quite a long time now, he's been doing these these uh, guided, you know, what do you call them? Package tours trips, yeah. where you go on a on a music trip to Memphis. Um, oh, right, so yeah. through that, and you you get to meet uh, George Klein, or well, you did when he was alive, and yeah. and um, and Larry Geller and people like that. So he's he's he got to know them personally. And and he wanted to, so he heard lots of stories and he wanted to write a book about what he felt was the true story of Elvis and, and also, you know, weave in. And uh, there, there's this publisher in, in, uh, in Stockholm called Premium Publishing. Who, they do a lot of music books. And I've, I've done some work for them and they needed someone to translate this book from Swedish to English so I said oh sure I'll do that and I uh, and I did so so you know I've done that as well there's an, uh, even that kind of Elvis connection that is wonderful it, it just this, this is I, I go back to this all the time this is what this show is about it's talking Elvis it really is is when when you know, you've got two people chatting about Elvis. You remember a link, you remember a story, the good, the bad, and the ugly, it all comes out. Mm. Um, but that's been fantastic. That is really fascinating stuff. Um, is there anything else you'd like to 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 add? Um, I, not, not really. I mean, I well, uh, I... I as I hope I've, I've made clear, I'm, 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 I'm an Elvis fan myself, not, not on your level, obviously, and probably <laughs> not on the, on the level of most of your listeners, but I really, I really enjoyed his, in his music. And I think there's good stuff in the fifties, in the sixties and in the seventies. Yeah. And, uh, if you, I mean, if you dig deeper, you, uh, you can find, you can find really good songs that I kind of have forgotten. Like one of my favorites is Love Letters, which, oh, yeah. I mean, that didn't do much business, I think, at the time yeah. as a single. And I, you know, I, I don't think it's, it's, it gets played a lot, but I love his version of that. And, uh, well, so, so yeah, you know, I'm, I'm all for Elvis. <laughs> well, thank you very much for giving, giving us some time here. Um, you know, I, I I I love me Elvis. I love music history. Um, I think Abba's a perfect pop band, and you just can't help but sing along with everything. Um, not sure about the movies, but that, that <laughs> but, you know, that's the, the same with the Elvis movies. Some of the Elvis movies are a bit dodgy. I was never taken with the Mamma Mia concept, but mm. I love the I love the real deal. Yeah. Um, Yes, yeah. I love the love the real deal of ABBA. Uh, any, any news and views of, of anything forthcoming with ABBA? Uh, you've got you've got a museum over there, haven't you? Yeah, we do. We do. It uh, it opened in two thousand and thirteen, and it's been a great success. Um, uh, obviously, they they're going through a bit of a rough time now with the, with yeah. the pandemic and everything. 
Um, and as you may have read, ABBA have recorded two, at least two new songs. Uh, they recorded them a few years ago and they recorded them in connection with um, this kind of avatar digital concert oh, experience yes. type thing. Yeah. And, it, and is that, is, uh, well, this is sort of uh, holograms and things, isn't it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's it's not it's uh, they they it's not it's not holograms. It's, uh, supposedly, it's like even better than holograms. It's it's <laughs> it's kind of groundbreaking technology. That's what they say anyway. And it's going to be. I think it's going to be in London. It's going to be in in one of those like oh, a well, like a permanent nice. like a permanent uh, thing where you can go and and. Uh, and watch that and this with this so it's a live show with with abba looking like they did in 1979 in digital format and they were going to do you know the greatest hits obviously but then the four abba members said well you know actually if we're going to do this shouldn't there be you know should it wouldn't it be wouldn't it be more valid if we actually recorded some new stuff so they oh. recorded two two new songs a, a few years ago and we still haven't heard them but i I think they're going to be released, you know, uh, soonish. <laughs> oh, brilliant! And and that technology is going to open the floodgates for everybody else, then, isn't it? Mm. You know, you'll have everybody. You'll have Elvis one week and John Wayne the next. Uh, yeah, <laughs> yeah. They'll uh, the the new digital version of them. Oh, well, I think it's fantastic. So, looking forward to the future. Thanks for everything there. I've really enjoyed it. I'll go and play my album again. And uh, it keeps pr pride a place. Um, if you think of anything else, you know where we are. Give us a shout. Um, can anybody get in touch with you if they need to? Sure. I mean, they can they can get get in touch with me through my website, carlmagnuspalm.com. So that's where they find me. Brilliant. Uh, good. What's happening with you in the future? Have you got anything amazing lined up, or is it all top secret at the moment? No, I'm 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 working on an on an ABBA book uh, at the moment. I'm always working on an ABBA book, <laughs> so <laughs> uh, yeah. So that that's what that's what I'm doing. Uh, just waiting for the pandemic to be over, and uh, you know, like everybody else. Oh, that's great. Yeah. What, for the new normal, whatever that is. Yeah. That's yeah. Exactly. Yeah. Brilliant. Well, that's great. Well, thanks for all your time, and uh, keep flying the flag. Thank you so much. Cheers then. Bye now. Well, what a Bye. That was absolutely fascinating interview. Carl Magnus Palm, the ABBA historian. From Before I we, we talk about this, um, to, to you folks who are listening to uh, us talking before the interview, the genuine surprise in my voice uh, when Vince told me <laughs> who he was interviewing here is, is absolutely genuine. I, I promise you, he did not tell me about it uh, pre-recording or anything like that. So uh, well done. That was excellent. I really enjoyed that. <laughs> really well, it made a change, didn't it, that one? Oh, brilliant, brilliant. And, and I love all the uh, um, the references, you know, and it's like even uh, to um, uh, the arranger of the songs, was it Sven Olaf Val Valdef or something? Yeah. Abba, Eurovision, Napoleon Man. Yeah, that's uh, it. Who, who did the arrangement on some of the uh, Elvis, uh, uh, Headland Sings Elvis album, which I have listened to, by the way. It's very, very good. Well, I you know, I, I, I actually really like um, some of the, you know, because the guy, this guy is so good. But the Young and Beautiful arrangement, I really like. Um, and you know what? I've, I've not heard Old Shep sound quite like that either. Yeah. And lovely tender, and, but, but he's not doing no. a he's not doing a no, 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 no uh, not at all. which is great. Um, yeah. but it's a proper tribute, isn't it? It's very good and very well made. And, and the, or the orchestration on this is, is actually quite good. It's all right. <laughs> yeah, it beats the RPO. <laughs> Oops, can I say uh, that? <laughs> <laughs> he was on the telly last night as well. The uh, he? yeah, he was on a, a documentary about Abba on the telly. I I noticed on Channel Five, right, and, there, and there he was. I, I do love the fact that his father uh, travelled to um, to America to see anybody famous, basically, yeah. and, and presented them with an ashtray. Uh, <laughs> Blanket with an ashtray. I'm thinking I used to smoke, so I've probably got a couple of ashtrays somewhere. So yeah. um, if you're famous and you're listening to our voices at the moment, then uh, be prepared. You might have an ashtray on your way soon, <laughs> uh, just so I can get in. <laughs> You just go, um, you know, you just imagine you are, you've had it engraved. <laughs> the readers of Blah Blah magazine think you're the best, and that's it. And, yeah. and, and underneath, you can just you can just make out Mitchells and Butler's pubs or something like that, you know. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. 
Oh god. You, you missed out on a, on a on a couple of things here, and I'm gonna and I'm gonna have you for this. Um, oh no. Uh, when when Carl said that his father had gone uh, to America and met Elvis um, on the set of Viva Las Vegas, he probably said not too many people uh, from Sweden would have met Elvis. Now, let's face it, right? He's on the set of Viva Las Vegas. Who's his co-star? Yeah, I was, I was going to do that. I was going to do that one. Yes. <laughs> and Margaret Olsen. <laughs> yes. You don't, born, get, much, you don't get much more Swedish than that. <laughs> because I thought that was going to be the reason that he that his dad had gone. I yeah. thought they were get, when he said that there's an Elvis connection, I thought he was going to go, you know, she's the most beautiful <laughs> Swede. We voted her this, that, and the other. And Elvis was a byproduct. But now it's even better, isn't it? Just blagging yes. it for the sake and, of blagging it. I do love that. And then somebody other, uh, another Swedish person who met Elvis, and and you and me have both had a connection here. The Swedish princess Margarita. Yes, from and we and we saw yeah. uh, we saw that one at um, at Randers, didn't we? At the Memphis Mansion, uh, there's a picture of Elvis on the GI Blue set with. Um, uh, Princess Margarita of Sweden, uh, Queen Astrid of Norway, and yeah. the Princess, uh, now the Queen of Denmark, Margareta. Queen of Denmark, yeah. And if you go back to episodes three and four, our house of uh, Talking Elvis, you'll be able to listen to Henrik talk, telling us all about that one. So uh, there you go. There's another, another Excellent couple. Excellent connection. Uh, well, well and, advertised. And so, so brilliant. So, <laughs> so I would I would encourage people to go back and listen to certain episodes at certain times because it's, it's very good. I have to say. Yeah, yes, it, it is. We we know we were there. Hi guys, this is Jamie K from the Jungle Room podcast, and you're listening to Vince Wright and Ian Gray on the Talking Elvis podcast. When are we going to Stockholm to the to the? Well, that, that's going to be the next thing, is it? I mean, <laughs> really? I, that really is. When, when I told you about it uh, the other day, and you said, you know, we've got to go across the bridge, mm-hmm. I did yeah. have a bit. Of, I did have a bit of a funny turn because you know what happens in the middle of those bridges. Oh crikey! Yeah, right in the middle. <laughs> yeah. Oh dear, you're gonna, you're gonna be dismembered on the on the yeah, on the, dismembered on the, on the half, bridge, half, yeah, halfway. Yeah, uh, uh, <laughs> Scandinavian bridges. They put the wind up, mate. Yeah, oh, I've forgotten about that. <laughs> Probably just as well. <laughs> I love the idea of this not hologram thing. Um, mm. You know, because the Elvis concerts that we we've we've seen. Um, with the RPO, some of the footage they used was a bit VHS 12th generation. Yeah, and you think, you know, if there's going to be a technology like this out there, then, I, I you know, I'd like to think that the that one of the top people they're going to do it for is got to be Elvis, doesn't it? For, you know, money spinners, it's got to be the, the big one. I, sh- I should think that's on a list of somebody's to do somewhere because um... – uh, they they you know they're running out of ways to market new stuff for Elvis, aren't they? So uh, yeah. this is, this has got to be up there, isn't it? As uh, if the technology is available. Yeah, I, I mean that that's that's the thing, and and you know we, we've got cartoons, we've got comic books, we've got everything mm. else. They mm. really are kind of scraping the barrel, dare I say it? Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> yeah it's true, it's true. Let's uh, let's just go back to Sven Headland uh, just for for a moment. Um, have you have you managed to? Uh, take a look or hear any of this um, 2010 album that's Carl yes. talking about there, and, the and, the vid- and the videos and everything. Are they there? Are they, can you find them? I found bits. Yeah. Um, but uh, yeah, and I found it for sale for ridiculous money as well. Oh, uh, right. Okay. Because <laughs> yeah. I because I looked up uh, Sven Headland on uh, Amazon UK and I got a picture of a reindeer. So <laughs> 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 nothing on Amazon UK, I'm afraid. Uh, uh, so. Uh, I set up uh, on Spotify. I've set up uh, a playlist. Uh, oh. what did I... Yeah, so if you want to have a listen there, I've got Hep Stars do Elvis. If you have a look at it, uh, so I've done. I've found all the tracks off various Hep Stars albums that were Elvis. Say, plus which Ben the... Anderson would have played on. Yes, which he yeah. definitely would have played on. Plus, yeah. the Sven Headland sings is uh-huh. on there. Yeah. Um, and I've put all the songs that were Elvis covers, and there's two little bonus tracks that are uh, a bit of a a bit of a dream. There's obviously "Let It Be Me," they recorded before Elvis did, so I've put that on because that's cheating. And <laughs> I've put the uh, the Platters Only You on their version of the Platters Only You, because you know we still live in hope that the Elvis version will turn up at that one day. 
So what's that called? Hep stars do Elvis or something? Hep stars do Elvis. I've just okay, got... have, have a look for that. I'll have a look for that later. That's on a, it's just a shared one to have have a look if you're Ooh. on if you're on Spotify, um, great, or just go to the Hep stars and play everything. And it, it's great because you listen to the live albums and you do get you do get Beatlemania style screaming. Um, so it's contemporary sixties where Elvis was, you know, singing to a leopard and karate chopping him in. Um, Aaron <laughs> Scarum. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and, and nevertheless, a, a, a brilliant, brilliant interview. Well done on that one once again. Um, I hope that that it, there's yeah, a, you know there's a lot of Elvis there, <clears throat> and there's a lot of Abba there. But I'm I'm hoping people don't haven't turned off because it's too Abba. I I love it because it's the whole music story and it intertwines. But I still say give it give it, if you haven't listened to it all, anybody out there. Go back and, and do listen to it because it all relates to Elvis. It all goes back to Elvis. There was a lot of Elvis crossover there, wasn't there? Which, um, as the as as your interview wore on there, I I, I thought, well, how much more mileage can you get out of this? And yeah. lo and behold, he just car kept coming up with stuff, more stuff, and it's really good, really very very interesting and entertaining. Yeah, it's uh, it's a bit of a first, and we obviously, you know, we 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 like our Scandinavian connections. So yes, if anybody do. else yeah. has got any other connections they want to give us. So uh, that's uh, Sweden, Denmark. So we're looking at Norway and Finland next, if yeah. anybody's got anything yeah, yeah. <laughs> there for us. <laughs> yeah, there must be a Norway connection. Yeah, Go- Googling Norway Elvis as we speak. I think. Yeah, yes. <laughs> which brings us back to uh, Lilyhammer. Uh, <laughs> oh, yes, indeed. Yeah. Oh, that's great. Good stuff, um, well done. I think that was all. That was all. Uh, all, all very abbery and and very good. And uh, yeah. Yeah. you know, I think the only thing you can say is is to Elvis is thank you for the music, the songs you're singing. We'll be back next week, folks. <laughs> <laughs> hey, it's, uh, does your mother know? I don't know. Give her a ring, ring. <laughs> <laughs> I haven't got the the money, money, money. <laughs> stop it! Just stop it. <laughs> anyway, I'm off to the Waterloo. I'll see you later. <laughs> Find us at www.talkingelvis.co.uk or Facebook or YouTube or Spotify. In fact, any place you get your podcasts. Well, <laughs> on that note, I think we'll leave it there. Thank you very much for listening. Uh, Vince, well done on your interview with, uh, with, with Carl Magnus Palmer. And as they say in Sweden, adieu. Adieu. Or something. I- if you go, father down. Farewell, his father. All Swedish lessons gratefully received. Yeah, sorry. Uh, uh, sorry. <laughs> <laughs>